um, core entertainment, journalism from core entertainment, uh, radio into more development radio. These days, I spend most of my time um, working on the international development scene and um, applying a lot of that broadcast um, and journalism knowledge and skill this time around to um, amplifying the voices of grassroots level citizens to make sure that the government that serves them truly delivers all the goods and the services that um, they deserve. For our session this morning, we'll be discussing how to organize and deliver your message. As radio broadcasters, often um, we work very hard on making sure you sound right. We work very hard on making sure that, you know, we put all our books together and have everything set and just present. But the question is, can you do it in a structured manner and in a way that ensures that you deliver your message start to finish, still hold a conversation where that is possible, um, and at the end of a show still be able to um, leave your message with a firm understanding of what the message was about, what the conversation was about, or what your presentation was about, um, and what they are meant to take away. So in organizing your message, it is this, I like to think of um, what we do as the ability to ask yourself the right questions. As a broadcaster and as a presenter, if you are not asking yourself questions, chances are that you would not be making some of the smartest decisions. So in organizing your message, the first question you need to ask yourself is, what is the most relevant thing to discuss today? There, there'll always be, or there'll never be a shortage of topics to present on, never. You, you might think, oh, I've done it all, but every day something new comes up. Every day there's a new angle or every day there's a new discovery or something we all thought we knew so well um, is restructured and re, you know, re-delivered in a different way. So there is no shortage of topics. But the question is, what is the topic that is most relevant? That is how you start to think about what message it is that you're putting together. In putting together a message as well, when you decide, okay, say for instance, you say, all right, I am going to present a topic on lack of a better idea right now, mosquitoes. I'm going to talk about mosquitoes. Well, what is it about mosquitoes that's so important right now, today? Second question that you should ask yourself when you decide on that is, why should my audience care? Who am I talking to? And why should they care that I'm going to talk to them about mosquitoes? And then the third question you should ask yourself is, what do they need to walk away with? So say I'm able to get them to care about mosquitoes because, you know, either it's mosquitoes give you malaria, or hey, maybe it's a new problem. Mosquitoes are now transmitting cancer, right? The question then that you ask yourself is, okay, why should they care? Is it because there are mosquitoes all over the place? Are there special types of mosquitoes? Or Nigerians, we just use insecticides or one of those coils and that'll kill the mosquitoes. Is the message that the insecticide doesn't work? Or is the message that there's a way that we can now kill mosquitoes for good and be completely mosquito free. And is your message a call to action for citizens to do that thing that they need to do or for your audience, your listeners, to do that thing that they need to do to stay safe from these new mosquitoes that are now carrying cancer, not the malaria we've always known. So you organize your message, you, you, that's how you begin, essentially by asking yourself 
key message, key questions. And when you've decided, okay, this is the key question, this is my topic, this is the key thing I'm going to discuss, and then this is the key thing I want my audience to go with. Then you sit down, okay. And the next step is then, right, how do I deliver this message? And how do I deliver it, deliver it in a way that resonates with my audience? How do I deliver this message in a way that ensures that my audience takes this message away, especially since it is so relevant and so important to them? How do I pass on the gravity of this message to them? That's a question you need to ask yourself. Um, I'd like to share my screen just so we have some text on, um, on the screen here. Uh, but it says uh, sharing is not enabled. So someone can enable sharing so I can just share my screen. N nothing major really on the slides. Apologies to everyone. I haven't, didn't have time to put together all of those, um, put uh, the slides together as well as I would have wanted but I thought it would be great for us to at least have the key points. Now, in delivering your message, there's always three things. Your introduction, the body of your message, and of course, your conclusion. In, in, a, typical, in a typical presentation, in, in a typical presentation where, um, you know, you're one-on-one, -on -one, you're standing in front of an audience, that, that is often very straightforward. It's a linear process. You introduce yourself, you talk about what it is that you're there to talk about in a really structured manner, and then you conclude your message. You take a few questions and that's it. But as radio broadcasters, the process is slightly different. And, and, and the question, you know, um, I, I'm guessing the question you would have for yourself now is, well, why is the process different on radio? We'll get to that in just a minute. I'm trying to share my screen here. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can find the right. Uh, okay. Uh, good. All right, so I'll need to quickly sign out and sign back in just a second. This will not take more than 20 seconds. Okay, ma.
Right, sorry about that. Um, okay, so I still need the share screen access if possible. Right. Okay, then, uh, let's see. Okay, so you can see my screen, no? Yes, ma'am, we can see your screen. All right. So as um, as I was sharing earlier on, um, you start your message, you have three, three processes that you go through. First, it's your introduction. Um, and then next is sort of the body of the message. And then finally you wrap up with a conclusion. It's typically a linear process if you were in person and making that presentation. So everyone can hear you um, and people can sort of see how you're moving your hands because in communication, as I'm sure many of you know, it's not only what you say, but it's also how, how, what your words say or what your voice says, but it's also how your hands move. It's also what your body is saying um, as you're speaking, right? So how do you do that effectively on radio where people can hear you, but they can't see you? where your body language cannot be heard um, or people can't see your body language. Here's one thing that very often is broadcast as we miss, which is just the fact that just because someone cannot see you doesn't mean that they can't read your body language from your voice. Um, I mean, the fastest way to test that is when someone calls you up and they've probably gone up a flight of stairs, they're on the third floor, the fourth floor, and they're talking to you. Chances are you'll ask, ah, are you tired? Were you climbing stairs? It, it's, if you think about it, sometimes we just subconsciously ask these questions, but it's because we have learned to pick up on certain cues um, for, for the human body. If someone calls you up and they're sad, you can tell from their voice, just from the way that person says hello, um, you will pick up on how excited, how sad, or even if that person's not in a location that's convenient for them to answer that call at that time. So your body language does come off in your presentation, in the way that you sound. Let's never mistake that. So what is an introduction when you're, um, when you're passing a message, what do you do? What is your introduction in presentation? That's where you then connect with the audience and you outline your, your topic. You tell your audience what you're going to talk about um, and why it matters. It should always be powerful. It should be catchy. It should be funny and all of that, which is great. And I'm sure this is not news to you, but the question is in your introduction or when you're on radio, how often do you introduce your topic? That's the non-linear process for radio. Statistically, it is said that a typical audience attention span is 15 seconds. So you have that challenge to, to start with. As soon as you turn on the microphone in 15 seconds, you need to tell us why we should care. Let's go back to the topic on mosquitoes. I'll open it up to the class right now. If I said to you, you're having a presentation. Now this is, it's not going to be perfect. It's gonna be messy, but don't, uh, don't be shy, just say it. If I said to you, tell me in 15 seconds why I should care about mosquitoes. And this is you starting off a presentation. I'd like to hear from you. How would you kick off? Anyone? can go here. All right, guys, if you want to try, 
please um, raise your hand so I can call. So I can call. No one wants to have okay, it. Okay, Mr. Really, anyone um, can do uh, okay. I can't hear you. Is that Lisa? Well, I can't hear you, so you might need to. Yes, ma'am. So the question is in 15 seconds. I should express myself. Okay, I should discuss the topic mosquitoes. Why you should care about mosquitoes, right? Yes, begin begin a, a conversation, begin a presentation that's about mosquitoes, but give me the introduction in 15 seconds. Mosquitoes are more have killed many people than numerous wars. Is that, are you done? No more, no more. Mosquitoes okay. have killed many people than numerous wars. Uh huh. We're waiting for the rest of it. Mosquitoes, hello? Are you still there? Yes, ma'am, still there. So, okay. So, I the the death toll is more than the, the world wars combined. They have killed many Africans, African children, and make. Okay, that's a little more than 15 seconds. <laughs> Um, interesting way to put it. Who else wants to give it a go? I'll pick a name if someone doesn't volunteer. Let's hear from a lady. Blessing, in 15 seconds, how would you present, how would you start off your presentation on mosquitoes? How would you introduce it? Is Blessing with us? Blessing, please answer the question. Good day, Ma. Mm -hmm. um, talking about mosquito, um, I would like to say mosquito is one of the deadly insects that we've ever come across with that kills like kills a lot of children and maybe um women and other adults too. Okay, interesting. 15 seconds gone. Um Kayo Day, I see your hand is up. Please introduce in 15 seconds. Yes. Okay. Good morning all. I'll start by saying an underrated menace to the Nigerian society is malaria, majorly caused by mosquitoes. If you go to the hospitals, a bulk of the people there are sick and malaria is um, the problem. Mosquitoes, the cause, thank you. Okay, that, that was 20 seconds, but okay, interesting. Anyone else want to give it a try? All right. So let how about we do it? How about if you did it this way, right? We say the topic is mosquitoes. And I have just turned on the microphone and I have this audience in River State and Potakot that's listening to me. I've, you know, the news has probably played. And then my intro music has played. 
and I turn on the microphone. My topic for the day is mosquitoes. And in 15 seconds, I need people to quickly appreciate what the conversation, what, what I'm presenting about and be interested in what I'm about to say. Mosquito is a topic that everybody knows about. That mosquitoes cause malaria, everybody already knows about that. But the difference is that I've got the secret that I'm going to share today about how people can completely eradicate mosquitoes in their neighborhood. Like you can completely make sure that you never ever have to buy another, you know, another can of insecticides or whatever to kill the mosquitoes. That's my, that's my trick. So here's how I would start it, right? Turning on the microphone. Good morning, Port Harcourt. It's a beautiful day and I'm happy to be with you today. I have a secret to share with you. And the secret is about eradicating mosquitoes. Yes, it is possible. And I will share that secret with you today. 15 seconds. Just that. Straight up. There's, I don't need to explain anything. I just need a hook, right? Um, so that's how you kick off. So that's how you start presenting your message. It has to be, what is that thing that you're going to do? It, it's got to take us in from the get. So now that I've shared another example, I'd like to hear from somebody else. Um, right. How would you present your mosquitoes? How would you capture your audience um, in 15 seconds on a topic about mosquitoes? Let's go through this again. Two people. Any two people, or I'll call a name. Wisdom. I'd like to hear you introduce a topic about mosquitoes in 15 seconds. So, Ma, I need to get, I, I don't think I heard you correctly. I'm trying to understand the question. You said I should introduce the topic about mosquitoes. In 15 seconds, yes. Your presentation uh, today is about mosquitoes. And audience attention span is 15 seconds. In the first 15 seconds, whatever you say will determine whether I turn off the dial or I keep listening. What would you say? Okay, I'll say... Uh... Okay, guys. So today we're going to talk about something that disturbs everybody. Okay, virtually everybody, because we're going to talk about mosquitoes and effects on all of us. And today I'm going to share with you guys some interesting things you need to know on how to curb the effects of mosquitoes and malaria as a whole. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that that was said in about 25 seconds. Um, okay. Interesting. Um, someone else, one more person. How would you do it? All right, Wilson, I haven't heard from you. So Wilson, how would you do this in 15 seconds? Hey, good morning, listener. Let's do it. Most things you probably may have not known about more. Is it just me? I don't think I can hear Wilson anymore. Oh, okay. Wilson, did we, I didn't catch um, half of what you said. Alyssa, go ahead. Yes, Ma, um, I want to try again. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead, Alyssa. Mosquito, your enemy. 
Do you want to know how to get rid of them? Stay tuned. good people i'll be giving you the tricks and tips okay okay well not bad definitely an improvement definitely an improvement good one there um good one there Alyssa. right so I, i'd like to share with you this um there's a video that I'll share with you now before we go into talking. It's just breaking down the body um, of a message. But this is a perfect example of sort of kicking off a message, um, talking, going into the body of the message, um, and then getting into a conclusion. In, all right, let me share my screen and share this video with you. Hopefully, we don't have audio issues um okay can you hear this did you hear that i just want to confirm yes ma you heard the video yes yes okay all right so let's watch this Let's watch this and I'll ask you all to play very, pay very close attention. I'd like to hear from you after, uh, after this, what stood out? Think of the technicality of how this was presented. Um, what stood out, what would stand out for you um, and why you think um, the message resonated, if it did. Every morning in SEAL training, my instructors, who at the time were all Vietnam veterans, would show up in my barracks room, and the first thing they'd do was inspect my bed. If you did it right, the corners would be square, the covers would be pulled tight, the pillow centered just under the headboard, and the extra blanket folded neatly at the foot of the rack. It was a simple task, mundane at best, but every morning we were required to make our bed to perfection. It seemed a little ridiculous at the time, particularly in light of the fact that we were aspiring to be real warriors, tough, battle-hardened SEALs. But the wisdom of this simple act has been proven to me many times over. If you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride, and it will encourage you to do another task, and another, and another. By the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. And if by chance you have a miserable day, you will come home to a bed that is made. <laughs> that you made. And a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. So if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. And that's it. Okay. So I'd like to hear from all of you now. What what stood out for you as you were listening to this? Um, anyone can begin. Itari, I haven't heard from you this morning. So in that in that last present in, in that video I just played, what stood out? Hello, yes, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Hello, uh, I'm in a very noisy environment. I don't know. Uh, I'm in a very noisy environment. We can hear you clearly. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, what's what's to that for me is that uh, uh, making your bed first in the morning, the world a better place. Okay, him. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. So what you got? Is it making your bed will what? Yeah, I said making your bed first in the morning is the first step of making the world a better place. So that is what stood out for me. 
Okay, nice. Okay. What else? Okay. okay. Um, the, the, the proper positions where they have to be. So the edges have to be straight. The edges of the bed have to be straight. Okay, all right, all right. So making your bed nice and neat every morning, you can change the world. Who else, what else? Uh, okay, thank you, Terry. I'd like to hear from someone else. What did you take away from that video? Hello, Ma, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, um, I learned that when you make your bed right, even if you had a bad day, you'd have a nice bed to come back to. And if it happens that you do have a good day, you'd feel good because you started off your day by properly making your bed. And I also saw that the um, video was able to capture our attention in first 15 seconds because of the angle we took it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um, wisdom. I saw your hand up. Go ahead, please. Okay. One thing I learned from the video was that in order to like have a productive day, you need to set targets. I mean, it doesn't have to be big tasks to carry out. You have to carry out small tasks first. It doesn't matter what type of task. You just need to start the day off right and it will make you prepared for the day. Okay, okay. Waking your bed right. So here's, here's, um, here's the thing I'd like you to take away from that video and I've dropped a link to it so you can watch it again. First of all, yes, he did catch our, our, uh, our attention in 15 seconds. But second of all, he picked one of the most mundane tasks in the world and we learned a lesson from it. He helped us track how just from making your bed, you could potentially accomplish more in your day. By accomplishing more in your day, you're able to do greater things in the world. And because you're able to do greater things in the world, you have changed the world. He didn't use those exact words, but the message was conveyed. You want to be efficient, make your bed. You want to accomplish more during the day, start by doing little tasks. You want to do great things in the world, start by making your bed. But it's just how he connected those dots in a very succinct manner that's super important. Now, the question is when you turn on the radio, is that the thing that you are able to do for your audience as well? connecting the dots. We said mosquitoes today. We have a secret for how to eradicate mosquitoes. Can we connect the dots in a presentation for our audience to help them see, or are we instructional? As a presenter, more than anything, because you're not only presenting, you're also teaching, more than anything, it's important for you to help people see things in a different light. It is important for you to help people appreciate what you're telling them, that what you're saying is able to resonate with your audience is always, always important. It should always be the first thing on your mind when you turn on the microphone. So let's go back to how in presentation on radio, your introduction, your body, and your conclusion is not a linear process. Every time you turn on the microphone, you have potentially one or two minutes to introduce, begin, the, set the stage for the conversation. And if you're going to turn on the microphone, if you're going to turn on, um, uh, turn on the, the telephone for your audience to call in and have an, a conversation or a discussion with you, you have maximum a minute, a minute and a half to set the tone enough to interest people in having a conversation. And even after you've sort of 
had a conversation with one person, two people. The thing you have to remember on radio is that audiences come in and audiences go out. If you think about what people are doing as they're listening, not every single person who's listening to the radio has it turned on and just sitting somewhere plain, loud all the time, 100%. People flip through channels. People do different things at different times of the day. Even if the radio is just playing, sometimes it's playing as background noise and a person may not quite be paying attention. But every now and then when there's a quiet moment, the attention goes to the radio and what you're saying. And so as a presenter, it's super important for you to constantly reset your introduction. Taking all of that into cognizance, remembering that the last time you introduced or the last time you set the introduction was maybe five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, two calls ago. You have to constantly keep it at the back of your mind as you're, as you're speaking that someone may just be latching on to the station right now. What do you need them to know as they're listening? What do you need them to know? Often as presenters, we, we live with the fallacy of the assumption that, oh, because I'm on radio, you know, I'm this really big superstar. I don't need to reintroduce myself. Yes, you do constantly. And that is the thing that will help keep your audience. Now, the thing that will continue to keep your audience is that sharp, short, witty 15 second introduction. You have to keep throwing that introduction in, in different ways, in different styles, but you have to find a way to continue to reiterate your topic and why this conversation is important throughout the lifespan of that presentation, whether it's a one hour presentation, a two hour presentation, you have to continue to reset your introduction. That's if I leave you all with nothing else, that is the most critical thing um, in presenting your message to your audience as a radio broadcaster. Now then, let's go into the body of your message. In, in the body of your message, that's where you include all of the evidence and then you build the intensity and the interest. So since we're speaking about, let's say, still using that um, uh, topic we've pick, I've picked for today, which is mosquitoes, now, still using mosquitoes, we said that the reason why it's important is because there's a way that you can eradicate mosquitoes entirely, right? So how do you build the intensity? Is the way that you can eradicate mosquitoes um, entirely? Someone, someone give me one outlandish reason. How or one potential way that we can eradicate mosquitoes? Just one way. Can someone give me a quick, quick idea? Coyote, I haven't heard from you. Coyote, what do you think? It's a hypothetical. It doesn't have to be an actual thing. But if we said that we were going to eradicate mosquitoes, what's the one way you think we could do that? Hello? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Well, um, okay. I would say That's why you use cleaning it. of our environment. That's the key way of eradicating mosquitoes. You are you I would use to show you. I would say that. This is how you live your life. Did you not ask? Okay. Um. Right. Sounds like you're in a noisy place. Yeah, but that's mundane. That's a typical way. I can't tell um, you. Lie against God yes, yes. Terry, go ahead. What do you think? To tell you. Okay. One is uh, you can use think, mute him. Okay. Okay. So, you know, clear off their breathing areas such as uh, stagnant waters. Okay. So let's not forget that we're saying, thank you, Terry. Let's not forget that we're saying we have this new and innovative way or this very different way that people don't know. And it's a big secret that we're going to expose. So how about we say that, that the big secret for eradicating mosquitoes that you know, um, scientists have just found out, which is the secret that we're sharing with people in our communities is that all you have to do is make salt and pepper and spread it around your neighborhood. And that's it, you're done with mosquitoes for good, forever. 
So how do you build momentum to this? If we use that example, oh, the secret that I'm sharing with you today is that you can eradicate mosquitoes in your neighborhood entirely. It's a big secret that hasn't been shared. And I'm happy to be the first person to share this with you. And you can eradicate mosquitoes with the ingredients in your kitchen. So stop, stop cooking that jollof rice. Let's go and deal with those mosquitoes first. First and foremost, get some salt. Second of all, get some pepper. Now there's a, spe there's a specific mix, and this is most important. Yes, if you're wondering, it is salt and pepper that will help you eradicate mosquitoes. But don't just mix it in any way that you want. There's a specific formula. Hold on, we'll continue talking about this. In fact, do you believe me? If I was presenting this, I would start by calling, asking people to call in and tell me whether or not they believe that my secret is true because then that will force them into a debate internally and build interest for those who are not calling to say, well, who believes her, who doesn't? I mean, and then people will be asking themselves, huh, if that has been the solution, why wasn't that the solution a long time ago? But the idea is you want to just build intensity in the conversation. Um, so you, you, you because it's something scientists have discovered, there's the scientific evidence that you have researched, right? So you want to structure this evidence. And, you know, as people are calling and saying, we don't believe you, if it was, we would have known a long time ago. You'll have people who are calling and saying, you know, it might be true. After all, we find something new every day, but everyone will have their own hypothesis. And so what you can do is you can build on that hypothesis. If you take, say, five calls of people saying, we don't believe you and people sending messages and you read those messages. And the next thing that you say to them is, okay, so here's how you do it. In a chronological manner, by pointing out cause and effect and counterpointing anyone who may have doubted you, you now sort of present what that secret is. Um, However you organize that though, just make sure that it is, it's relevant. Um, because another thing about scientific evidence is that it can be highly technical. Often as broadcasters, we forget that we're not talking to scientists. And so sometimes when we're presenting scientific evidence, we just spew out the words verbatim from what we've picked out from a document or something. No. It is your job as a broadcaster, as you're preparing for your presentation for that day, it is super critical for you to one, understand the topic, two, understand the scientific evidence in this case, because we're using mosquitoes and uh, the evidence is scientific, but if it's a research project, but understand the topic, understand the evidence, break it down for your audience in a simple to understand manner. That's how you communicate. If you're not doing that, then something's not right. You will not leave people with the important message. So there's a chemical process. Maybe it's not even the chemical process. Maybe it's even the fact of, of who it was that discovered this. Maybe it's just in a certain village. There's a certain way that they put together water and pepper, salt, water, and pepper. And because they throw that, scientists discovered, wait, there were no chemicals used in this village, but they have no mosquitoes. What is their secret? And that's how it was discovered. And, you know, it was tested out in other places and they found out it had to be a specific formula. See, that is the kind of, I guess, point that would be most relevant for your audience, not how you know, because of the chemical makeup of salt, the chemical makeup of pepper, and you start reeling out those algorithms, it's not going to matter. But you want to pull out the most relevant information. And then, you know, as you're discussing, you want to use transitional phase, phase, phrases in your conversation. Things like, so I've used that a few in the conversation. And the next thing is, okay, so from here, right. So the next thing is, Okay, so now we're doing this. Those are transitional phrases that are super important in a presentation and as you're building the body um, of your presentation. All right, 
And then let's finalize with the conclusion. It's 11 o'clock and unfortunately I'll have to um, sort of wrap up in a few so I can take questions. But as you conclude, that's where you now come back. You remind your audience about the pic big picture. You remind them about why this subject is important and don't be afraid to repeat exactly what you want them to remember. In 15 seconds again, here you redo your 15 seconds as a closer. Don't forget, with the right mixture, you can eradicate mosquitoes in your neighborhood. Do that now. Simple. That's what you want them to remember, right? That they can do it, that there's a specific formula, and it's something they need to do right away. Keep it simple. You can also leave people with like a powerful metaphor, leave people with a quote, or yes, challenge them to think about what it means for them. That's another thing. So if we're still using this topic, for instance, it can be based on where things are, what the, what's going on in the society at the time. If it's about mosquitoes still, it, it can just be, we need, may, maybe there isn't enough salt and pepper going around in Potakot. And it's for the government to do this, you know, or maybe it's a call to the person who's hoarding salt and hoarding pepper because they found out about this. Whatever it is, you need to challenge people to think about what this means for them. Things like, so this is happening. Now this means, because this is happening, this means that people can and should or have now, are now potentially saddled with the responsibility of eradicating mosquitoes on their own. And they don't have to wait for the government anymore. So I'll pause here. Any questions? Okay, um, if you have any questions, please signify by raising your hand. Please, if you have any questions, ask. Thank you. All right, are there no questions? That's also fine. Um, I'll, I'll, my question then is to everyone, to you all, and I'd like to hear back from each of you in 30 seconds. What is your biggest takeaway from our conversation today? or from this training today? Okay, Ma, um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, my biggest takeaway from today's class is that the first 15 seconds are the most important because that's when you capture your audience. So you have to keep it simple and straight to the point yet give details on what you would be talking about for the rest of the program. Great summation. Kayode, your takeaway. Okay, um, my takeaway for today's session is that um, we need to script um, be sure, uh, be sure that we uh, script it in a way that our audience will be engaged throughout the whole session. Just keep them wanting more. Thank you. All right, thank you. Nicely put. Uh, Blessing, what's your takeaway from the training? Blessing, can you hear me? 
Yes, please, I can. My take home is of what I learned today concerning the topic of the day is you should always tell your um, audience what you're going to talk about and the reason for and the reason you said about a particular topic. And always go straight to Okay. All right. Unfortunately, network is not too kind to you at this point. Okay. All right. Great. Itari, I'd like to hear from you. What's your takeaway? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. My takeaway this morning is that as a presenter, you're also a teacher. So before you present or do presentation, you should have a proper knowledge of what you're presenting. Thank you. Did you get that? Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Great one. Tamara. Tamara, what's your takeaway from the conversation today? Um, okay, Ma, um, I, I spoke earlier. I said my take from this um, conversation oh, right. is, sure. yes, the first okay. thing seconds are the most important. So you right, have right. to clearly what to be presenting throughout the show in those 15 seconds. And you also have to be engaging so you don't lose your audience while you're speaking. Thank you. Okay. Blessing, right? I think it was blessing I was thinking of when I called you tomorrow. Um, yeah, blessing, uh, Ma, it's, yeah. yes, it's it's Olista. My network was okay. so bad I had to use uh, blessings form. Okay. Yes. All right. So what's uh, my your take, take home? I, yeah, my take home is um, about the introduction. I knew the introduction was important before, but now I can see that the introduction is super important. You have to, you have to always have it at the back of your mind. Is that someone is tuning in at a particular time. You don't assume that everybody started with you and you have to introduce yourself in different styles so you know you will not seem boring. Introduce yourself in different styles and um, ways, but just make sure that the key message is always passed at intervals of your presentation. Okay, yeah, nice, nicely captured. Um, who else hasn't gone for, who have we not heard from Wisdom? Okay, Ma, so my biggest takeaway today is to always try to be as engaging as possible. You try to be catchy, engaging, and try to hook your audience in so that you don't come off as boring. And also, you should always be well-researched about a topic before you go on air. All right, okay. Well, I think you've all captured it quite well and really succinctly. That's really good. Um, uh, before we take off, do you now have any questions for me? Um, please, if you have any questions, indicate by raising your hand. Thank you. All right, it's either Blessing or Olissa um, and Itari. Go ahead. Let's start with you, Blessing. I don't know if that's Blessing or Olissa, but go ahead. Thank you, Ma. Uh, my, I prepared a bunch of questions for you concerning um, your personal career. I don't know if I can ask it. Okay, sure. Before we get to that, though, let's hear Tyree's question. If, if, if it's related to the training today, then then we can come back and we can wrap up. Uh, I can wrap up, wrap up by answering your questions, right, Alyssa? Um, okay. Right. All right. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, Itari, go ahead. Okay. So what's the best method to get your listener engaged? The best method to get them engaged in your program? Um, well, that's, that's what we've been talking about all day, um, all morning, hasn't it? Keep it short, concise, 
um, make it catchy or funny, but more often than not, you say what's most relevant and don't bore people with unnecessary technicalities. The technicalities will, I mean, think about it if you're, if you're in a class or in a training and if I had spent my time today going into the techni technicalities of human nature and how psycho psychology or psycholo psychological papers and all of the proof of the evidence that has gone into that stipulation now that attention spans don't last longer than 15 seconds. If I had spent all morning going on and on about that, how much of that do you think would have been interesting for you? Probably not that much. But if I was speaking to a group of psychologists who are also radio broadcasters, then I can go into the technicalities and the details because then it matters to them. See, know your audience is super important. That's how you capture them. If you know them and you're asking yourself the right questions regarding what you're presenting to them, then chances are you will be able to capture and hold their attention, All right? Does that answer the question for you? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so if no one, no one else's hand is up, so I'll go to Olisa's um, questions. Olisa, so go ahead. You said you had a few questions regarding my career. Yes, Ma, I had um, some questions. For you. So Ma, I heard, I heard you are part of Wikimedia. Can you That's tell right. me more about Wikimedia and how you got and how you got there? More about Wikimedia and how you got to work at Make It with uh, Wikimedia. Well, the Wikimedia Foundation is a non-profit and a, a nonprofit with one of its biggest projects that we all know, which is Wikipedia. Um, like I mentioned earlier, most of um, my work since um, transitioning from broadcast journalism has been in international development. So yeah, it's just working in the development space is how I'm now with Wikimedia. Media in this case is not broadcast or TV, but more um, how media is the essential tool for, for knowledge and for curating the knowledge of citizens globally, the knowledge of different communities and countries and regions globally. So that is what Wikimedia does. Um, yeah, and that's, uh, that's essentially the work that I do, which is supporting the different communities of editors and writers and knowledge experts and professors and the likes from across the world who are all contributing to the different projects that Wikimedia is working on, which includes um, the Wiki Commons, the collection of um, photos and videos. There's the, uh, of course, Wikipedia, which is the collection of text. Um, and there are a number of other projects. Wiktionary, which is um, a collection of a diction different dictionaries from across the world and things, um, things like that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the work that I do now. Thanks for asking. Okay, thank you, Mar. Uh, Mar, I have a like, couple more. So I want to ask, so what's the most difficult thing or problem you're faced in your career? Sorry? I said, what's Sorry, the yeah. most difficult, yeah. what's the most difficult thing or problem you have faced in your career? It, the, the mic keeps going off, so I don't catch that question. Ma, I said, what's the most difficult thing you have 
faced in your career, the biggest problem you faced in your career? Problem? No, I, I never think of anything as a problem. Um, I think of a lot of challenges that one might have faced um, because life throws a lot at you. And if you think of things that are thrown at you as problems, ch chances are that um, you could very quickly get into a cycle of depression and self-hate. But when you're faced with a challenge, the challenges are meant to be overcome, surpassed, dealt with, right? Um, all right, I, I would say for me, the biggest challenge that I have had to address in my life is um, transferring the knowledge and the expertise and all of you know my experience from one career path to the to another career path. Um, going from media to international development was not the smoothest transition, but it was, I guess, just finding a way to apply my existing knowledge and skills into a new space and doing that effectively. That, that was the challenge I worked to surmount. And I, I think I, I'd like to think that I did that successfully. So that's it. Okay, Ma. Um, so I want to ask, as an upcoming presenter, what can we do to reach great heights, the likes of um, you and many other great people? What can we do to reach that height or attain that height? Hmm. I think I caught that question. Um, I, I know we aspire to do great things, to be great things. I'll take you back. I'll reference again the video that I shared with you. The link is here. The thing I like about that is how he just dwells on the simplest thing that you can do right here, right now, and building on that in increments. It's good to aspire to be like the greats. It's good to aspire to get to great heights. But I can guarantee you that every single successful person that you would speak with and you ask them, how did you get so successful? will most likely pause for a while. <laughs> and first of all, internally, the first question they ask themselves is, oh, you think I'm successful? Well, okay, maybe I am. Everyone has a goal that we're constantly trying to reach. Sometimes it's when you look back that you see how far you've come, but it's in looking back that you see the little increments. It's constantly growing. Um, you know, while you have an aspiration and you have a goal and you should keep those in mind, just think about constant growth every day. What new, what new thing are you learning constantly? What new short-term goals are you setting for yourself constantly? That, that I believe is even more important than the big goal or the big aspirations to be like the greats. Yes, you wanna be as great as the greats, but be a version of you that is great not a version of another great person. If you understand what I mean there, yeah. Yes, Ma, I, I get it, absolutely understood. Um, so I want to ask this last one. So sure. what chances does a, does a young presenter have, that your young presenter in Nigeria have to make it abroad? What chances? My first question is, why do you want to make it abroad? What's wrong with here? Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with finding another place. I know we all want to japa because that's the in thing these days. The question I, I often wonder is, why do, we, why do we not want to seek the adventure 
and rebuild a life that we're happy with. The good thing about traveling to more than one place, by the way, not, not just to one place, not just, okay, you want to take off and go to Canada, you go into the Canadian box, take off, you go to the US, you go fit yourself into the box in the US. You know, the thing that I think has helped me most as a human being, just for my own personal growth, that there's a saying um, that if you want to know yourself, travel, travel alone. It really is true. Travel alone. Yes, yeah, seek opportunities to travel and experience different parts of the world. Seek an opportunity to travel and explore different cultures, experiences. Explore all of that. Let your experiences in, in other environments, let that shape you and mold you into who you are as a person, and then that should help you determine whether or not you can make it somewhere else or if you even want to go somewhere else. But chances are that sometimes when you travel, you're able to see exactly the type of value that you can add and be in your own country and how you can make a decent living from doing that. Like I said, nothing wrong with traveling, but sometimes I find that those who travel and don't, and are thinking they'll travel and never come back, it's no exposure, completely myopic thinking, and not enough experiences to truly be making an informed decision like that on, on a, a big, big thing in your life like that. Be a success oh, wherever you are. Don't focus too much on being a success somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, Nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of value you can add by just building and growing yourself. If you don't build and grow yourself naturally, you won't make it anywhere else. All right, I'll pause here. Okay. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much, Ma. You're welcome. So Ma, a little, a little secret, what's the best place you have worked in as an OAP? <laughs> oh, that's a trick question. Huh. It, it I, I, I've, I live based on experiences. So best place, I would say, uh, for a number of reasons, there are pros and cons to every place where um, I've worked. And Sammy can probably tell you more about how I approach my work. But when I get into a space, whatever space it is that I'm in, that is new to me, the first thing I want to do is I want to know every nook and cranny in that space. I want to own it, if possible, commandeer it, but more than anything, I want to understand it through and through, right? And the only places that I have not enjoyed working are the places that do, did not give me the opportunity to do that. Um, and interestingly, none of those places were, um, were at media houses. There was, there was one media house, but it, that, that was just... Uh, a media house in Kaduna, but that was more creative differences than it was about being able to, to go and explore. The, the question I have for you based on that question is, what is a good work environment for you and what isn't? Because my experience is subjective to what I consider a good work environment. And your experience would be subjective to what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Some people go into a space or go to a media house and all they want to do is learn. And they don't care about how much they're getting paid, but they just want to take advantage of the opportunity to build, grow their knowledge. In that case, whether you're well paid, whether you know, there's a vehicle picking you up from home and taking, to you, taking you to work. Those things may not matter. They would be considered extra. 
a person like that wouldn't complain and say it was a perfect work environment. They were happy. They learned what they needed to learn and they took off. Another person's grown already. And for them, earning a decent enough living is important. And so a workplace that does not provide that, maybe promise that but doesn't provide that, wouldn't be a good work environment. For other people, they build their lives around their colleagues. And so for them, a good work environment is one where people, where there's good camaraderie, there isn't a lot of backbiting and cheating and lying about each other or trying to one up one another, you know. So to answer that question, I'll need to know you through and through to say, hey, yeah, so this is what a bad work environment is or no. I never considered it that for me. I always had the opportunity to explore, to learn from my colleagues, to, to hear about what's happening in engineering while I'm a broadcaster and understand it through and through to spend time in the production studio and poke and prod at the producer to show me a few tips and tricks on the system. And they did that willingly. Every place I ever worked, every media house I ever worked, I never had that challenge. So I never had a problem. Um, yeah. And in that case, to answer your question, none. There's no media house I've worked with that was the worst or the bad, was bad, you know, no. I always had a good experience. Fortunately. Okay, uh, McDonald, I see your hand is up. Or, uh, Alyssa, you have more questions? <laughs> okay, uh, McDonald, go ahead. All right, um, good, good morning, ma. Good morning. Yeah, my question is, uh, um, doing a working career as a OAP, uh, I want to know what is the, um, the most difficult thing you encountered, uh, maybe on your first day of work, you know, uh, so what was that that was so difficult for you on your first day of work, you know, uh, that's what I don't know, share experience on that, please. Huh. Yeah, I would probably want to be one of the few people that can't effectively answer that question for you, because my very first day on radio was... I wasn't alone. It wasn't a show for me alone. Um, and my very first day on radio was 18 years. No, I wasn't, goodness, 18. No, I was 16. Um, about, to, about to wrap up uh, secondary school at the time. This was a state radio station. And I was fortunate, I think, on, on the day that I went in because I had some of the greatest voices and names on, on radio at that day who were more than happy to take me under their wing um, and were really curious about this young woman who just seemed ready to take on the world. You know, I was young enough and naive enough to not have that type of fear and nervousness that comes from, oh, it's my first day on radio now. My cousin already worked on radio at the time. I had um, Yakubula Mai, MCIA. Um, those are the two names of the first voices on Cool FM, for instance. And this is even before private radio was uh, started to be licensed in Nigeria. That's when I started radio. Um, so I had that, the advantage of the Yakubula Mai, MCIA, um, and a few others, some of them are funny enough still there, but I had that advantage of them being around and each and every one of them wanting to give me tips and tricks. They gave me so much confidence. Um, so I never had that problem. I'm sorry. I'm one of the few people who can't answer that question for you effectively. Um, but I think I can understand where you're coming from, which is the butterflies in your stomach. We all feel it. Um, when it's something new and when you have to speak to a new audience, whether it's on radio or TV or even in person, everyone feels it. At the end of the day, it's your preparation that will see you through. And 
I find that being honest and upfront about how you feel is a really great way to quickly stop feeling that way. So if you're nervous, just, hello everyone, this is my first day and I'm nervous. Forgive me for any goofs that will happen through this presentation. And then you, can, you go on. Yeah, sometimes I find that just starting like that, okay? it can help you It'll break the ice with the audience. It'll help them see you as a human being. And third, the, because you've said that, people are more likely to overlook your goofs, unless it's a major one, <laughs> you know. But yeah, yeah, sorry, a, a roundabout way of answering your question. But no, I, I didn't have any challenges my first time on radio. That's it. Any more questions? Okay, Ma, um, thank you. In the absence of any questions, I would like to thank you so much for this beautiful lecture. And I would like to apologize on behalf of the class. Most of us were having network difficulties, so we couldn't link up. Uh -huh. But it's been an amazing class. I personally have learned so much from you. And I would put a thing or two into practice. Thank you so much, Ma, for the experience. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. No problem. My pleasure. And if, if I may suggest, um, Google Meet um, is, I, f I find that using Google Meet for group meetings is usually better, even with poor network, more likely than not, you, you'd get, uh, uh, you'd be better connected than, uh, than on Zoom. Uh, Zoom uses a lot more network um, and bandwidth um, than Google Meet. So you might consider that for the next training. But thank you everyone and I appreciate, thank you for honoring me and allowing me to train you today. Um, and yeah, wish you all the best. I know you're all super smart and I look forward to seeing and hearing about how great and how big you all become in, in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. All right, bye everyone. Bye Ma. Bye. Okay, everybody, thank you for coming to the meeting. Please don't forget to drop the lessons learned from this class on this chat. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. I'm ending the meeting.